Good morning. We are in chapter 22, lecture number 4D this week. Uh, we'll get through the conclusion of the war today. Uh, there is no reaction quiz this week. Everyone do a little dance, stay warm. Um, and then we are, you'll have your normal chapter 22 test tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to get to the end of World War II today. Uh, as 1945 opened, Allied victory was almost assured. There were still a few minor things to work out. Now it wasn't a matter of if the war could be won, but a matter of when the war would be won. At this point in 44 to 45, we are preparing uh, for post-war peace and what, that, what that's going to look like, which in Germany, it was a race for Berlin. However, the Germans weren't going to take it uh, lying over. In 19, the end of 44 and 45, the Battle of the Bulge will occur. It's a, it's a failed German offensive. Basically, the Germans are going to throw everything they've got at the Allies, the American side, invading uh, that have been broken out from D-Day. They'll nearly succeed. Uh, they will encircle uh, an American group near Baston, France. And one of the most famous quotes from that moment is, the American colonel there, the Germans sent an envoy saying, "You will you surrender or you should surrender. And, of course, the Americans didn't, but the commander for the, the, the Americans did not know what to reply, and all he said was, nuts. And he sent that back to the German commander. The German commander got this back. He had no idea what it meant. What does it mean? Even the commander didn't know what it meant. He just said, nuts. Americans did not surrender. They held out just long enough, and then Patton's, I think it was 3rd Army, rolled in up the tanks to relieve the pressure from the Germans, and they held the line. Um... March, American troops crossed the Rhine River um, and entered the heartland of Germany. Um, May 8th will be known as VE Day, the day the, the, the Germans will surrender. So Germany capitulates very quickly after the Battle of the Bulge. It takes a few months. And American forces, along with Soviet, British, and French, free French forces, will occupy Berlin. Um, and they both kind of meet there in the middle of Germany. Hitler, um, as official records, committed suicide at the end of April. Um, there is debate now that's been growing on whether he actually committed suicide or not. I'm not to get into conspiracy theories here. Um, but if you study it enough, enough key officials from the German um, high ranks did escape Germany. Um, we do know that Argentina had a high influx of uh, Nazi officials after the war. So there's a possibility. Hopefully he died in that bunker a miserable death. But... Um, the reality is there is a possibility he could have escaped. Now, I'm not going to change the official narrative that he didn't commit suicide and died in the bunker, but there is evidence out there that it's actually not far-fetched now that he um, may have escaped. Either case, he'd be dead by now, um, unless he's living on the dark side of the moon. Um, kidding on that. He's not on the moon. But the most terrible weapon, as Germany surrenders, FDR uh, will win the election of 1944 for an unprecedented fourth term. Um, like I said, Truman took over his vice president. He was deemed as a moderate to help win the, the, the election. Uh, victory was not assured by FDR, by the way. Uh, he beats Thomas Dewey. Um, however, right after he takes office in 45, um, I believe he has a stroke or a brain aneurysm, and he dies in his wheelchair. Um, they find him unresponsive. He basically had a, brain, a stroke and a brain, like a brain bleed, which I think an aneurysm is. And he died. Huge shock to the American public. Uh, but either case, Truman, who was an unknown relatively, is thrust into national spotlight. Literally, Truman, upon FDR's death, had no knowledge of a lot of the, the inner workings of the government or the secret stuff going on. Within hours of becoming president. He goes, oh yeah, Mr. President, here. A file was flapped down in front of him. He was briefed on the atomic bomb. So when Truman says the very famous statement, he goes, if you boys have ever had a, a hay bale fall on you, that's what it feels like right now, right? When a hay bale falls, if you ever put up hay, it's quick, fast, and hurts, but then you kind of recover and you kind of get your work buries you, either one. Um, it's what he felt like. He said it just like the whole world just hit him, right? Truman, after this, is going to make some practical changes on how our, our secrets are held and how we disseminate information to elected officials. Because Truman 
being vice president, you probably should have known this information, right, in case FDR died. So he's literally running on, hit the ground running, trying to figure out what's going on. The practical realization of the theory of relativity came to light. In 1940, as early as 1940, FDR authorized what was called the Manhattan Project, a top secret government program in which American scientists developed the atomic bomb um, that we, we, we know that was used in World War II. The bomb will not be successfully tested until July of 45. Um, Hence why I've got the, the GIF going on the top right hand if you're following this PowerPoint. Um, the very first, I think that's, the, that's a GIF of the first successful dropping of the atomic bomb, or it's just a fun GIF I found. Either way, it's cool. But the point of it is the first successful uh, dropping of the bomb was in July of 45. Just as a side note, when they dropped the bomb, they weren't sure if they were going to incinerate the whole Earth. They were worried that they would actually light the entire atmosphere on fire. Pretty big worry. Oh, Ultimately, they did not, but just imagine if they had dropped it. It was like, woof, everything would have, they'd be like, whoa, oh no. But uh, they dominated the atomic age. In August 6, 1945, an atomic bomb was detonated over Hiroshima. The Japanese had refused to surrender. We had sent envoys. Uh, Truman takes a heavy beating on this decision. Ultimately, I think he made the correct decision. There was no, some will say there were signs. If you break it down, when you have Japanese soldiers marching off a cliff so they won't surrender 20,000 strong, that shows me a sign of a group of people that are not willing to surrender. They'd rather die than surrender. And thus, um, early estimates invading Japan and occupying it was 100,000 to a million casualties on the, both sides. That was something American president could really not handle if 100,000 uh, 100, American soldiers died taking Japan. Uh, August 9th, there was no message from the Japanese. We dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki. Now, like I said, many questions using this bomb and finding out its devastating effects. Obviously, radiation poison we were not aware of at the time. But ultimately, the second bomb, after the second bomb is dropped, the emperor of Japan, who had been very quiet during the course of the war, will uh, come in and basically force the government to surrender. We also bluffed. We said we had a third bomb to drop. We did it. Sadly, as a side note, the, the USS Indianapolis, the, the cruiser that had delivered the atomic bomb to Tiananmen Island, where it was prepped on a B-29 bomber, was sunk right after. So literally, this ship was the most protected ship in the US Navy for the couple days that it transported the bomb from America to this island, right? As soon as the bomb is dropped off, all attention shifts to the island, right? The cruiser, hours later, is sunk by a Japanese submarine. It sinks within minutes. 800 men entered the water, and only a couple hundred lived. It's also one of the, I think it's the biggest shark attack ever recorded in history. Hundreds of men were killed by um, sharks. Yeah. So you survive a sinking, not to only be found by a shark attack. So this is a side note there, uh, and it went unfound. Like they didn't realize it sunk for like three days. So um, just an interesting side note there. Okay, the end of the war too. Well, the nature of the war: uh, 50 million died during the war, 20 million were civilians. It's the first major war besides World War One had some civilians die, but this war has even more civilians die. Uh, uh, Allied killed some hundred thousand people at Dresden firebombing alone. And I think at one point, um, before the atomic bombs are dropped, and both bombs, by the way, killed anywhere from 80 to 100,000 people both on the initial blast. Before we dropped atomic bombs, we dropped incendiary bombs. Those of you who played Call of Duty, you know what incendiary grenades are, right? Fire grenades, or those stupid shotguns you shoot and they shoot like fire everywhere. They made Tokyo Bay boil. They, think, they estimate, I think, seventy to 80,000 people died on that event alone. So this was a very, very costly war. Very, we, The war was a technology. Everything that was available was used. It's the last total war the world's ever seen. We used every single asset we had to win the war. Uh, March 9th, 1945, nearly the same amount died in Tokyo due to the firebombing with the harbor, when I said the harbor boiled. Planning the post-war world, post-dam conference, Stalin, Truman, and Churchill, they, uh, Churchill were replaced halfway through with Clement Altley, uh, Altley, 
Ironically enough, so this is in the summer of 45. This is planning the post-war world. Uh, Churchill loses an election. His party loses the election. He's removed from prime minister. And he's replaced by Clement Altley. So you have two brand new people now dealing with Stalin. Churchill and Roosevelt. Roosevelt's dead. Churchill's been replaced. Now two brand new people dealing with Stalin. But at the end of the day, no one trusted Stalin. In fact, when Truman went to tell Stalin about the bomb, Truman kind of took a step back because Stalin said, I know. Or alluded to that he knew. Yalta and the Bretton Woods Conference. The Yalta Conference, FDR and Churchill entered only a mild protest against Soviet plans to uh, retain control of the Baltic states. The Yalta Conference was in 44. So before the post-war was finalized, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin, all three met. And that's that famous photo I have back there. But that's the Yalta Conference. However, fast forward to the post-war, uh, post dam which is just the name of a city in, I believe, Germany. What they tentatively agreed here is going to change a little bit. Um, Stalin's going to try to flex his muscle at post dam because now he has two new leaders from the British and the Americans that he think he can swindle. He didn't really know what to expect of Truman, and ironically enough, Truman's going to become a very uh, good as adversary against Stalin. Um, the Bretton Woods Conference, they created two American-dominated uh, financial institutions, World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. Um, basically, post-war Europe is going to be dominated by America and America's banks. We are going to take – after World War I, we were not the lead – we are the lead negotiator now. We are taking the charge, and we're going to do things differently. We'll create the United Nations, which leads to uh, the end of the War III. As the wars come to an end, part of the new world order that will emerge, we'll create the United States, uh, United Nations, the successor to the League of Nations, but this time it has teeth. You can mobilize. There's a voting, and pretty much every single nation in the world will join this. And it's now centered in uh, New York City. It's on international ground. Technically, the ground's been dedicated to as a international zone, uh, but it is... Um, still in existence to the day. It has brought some peace and stability to the world. Peace but not harmony. As the war comes to an end, they produced a rattle redistribution of power around the world. Only the United States and the Soviet Union were able to protect significant, or project significant uh, influence. After the war, uh, and if you've watched any of the, the British, uh, British movies like The Crown, King's Speech, or stuff that takes place in the 50s and 60s, the British lose big chunks of their empire. Not because they're bad rulers, essentially, but because they cannot, they no longer have the financial backing to control it, and they cannot project power. World War II broke the British. They used everything to survive, and now they are broke. So you're going to see India become its own country again. You're going to see uh, parts of the Pacific that have been colonies go back to being countries. Um, so you're going to see a whole shift in world perspective. The Soviets are going to occupy Eastern Europe. And they'll create a division, uh, basically what they call the Iron Curtain. So Eastern European countries such as Poland, East Germany, um, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, um, they're going to basically be communist controlled. Okay. Remember, what did Stalin want as a post-war mean? He wanted a border protection, right, from any future Russian incursion or German incursion into the Soviet Union. So he's trying to get that buffer zone. We're also in the atomic egg, egg, age. Um, nuclear bombs are now the reality. At this point, at the end of the war, the Soviets don't have it, but it's just a matter of time. Calls for freedom of India, Africa, and American blacks. So in America, we're going to have the civil rights that are going to come to the forefront. Uh, African and Indian countries are going to push for freedom. Countries such as Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, etc., to name a few. Iran, Iraq, countries that have been occupied by the British, India. Uh, the French are going to have the same problems with Al Algeria and what we call uh, the French Indochina, which is what we've better known as Vietnam. So there's a lot of disruption after the war. So World War II comes to an end. I could spend days and hours talking about World War II. I hope I gave you a good synopsis of it. There's a lot more to it. Um, the, last, the, the lasting impact of the war, though, is it was an unresolved 
issues from World War One, the rise of Hitler in Nazi Germany and the rise of Japan, though separate, they are very similar, in which uh, powerful leaders emerged in both countries uh, to lead them to what they said was a betterment of their country. But through it, massive genocide, massive crimes against humanity were committed. Ultimately, and thank goodnessly, the United States, the British, um, the, the free French, and others will prevail. I'm not going to put the Soviet Union in there because they were, though they were a very good cause, they were very, 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 very bad themselves. Um, so the war comes to an end. And now we're going to go to what's a post-war world going to look like. Yes, it's over. It's finally over this week's lectures. End of lecture seven. Chapter 22 quiz will be posted tomorrow. Hopefully we have a good weekend, no snow. There's another chance for one to three inches Saturday if you did not know. Snow, snow, go away, please. Um, if not, we're going to have to shovel the track. So have a great day.